Good job. I get up every day. Just take your mask off. I'm sick, but I don't feel sick. How is how is a person with lung cancer right. supposed to feel? He couldn't even tell me. It's like, well, what's wrong? What happened? I went home. I told my wife. Um, It is a death sentence. Um, it, it is a, 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 a very poor prognosis disease when you have stage four lung cancer. I couldn't say it because uh, we know the, the chances of surviving are very little. Because, well, he, he told me that I have that. What? The doctor just told me that I have cancer. And she goes, what? No way. Everywhere we go, if we go to church, if we go to the store, he holds my hand. We're very in love. <laughs> you can feel that. Part of the evaluation for lung cancer, we often do uh, MRIs of the brain. He had a tumor about the size of a grape. This is as serious as it gets. If the tumor would be allowed to grow without treatment, it would eventually kill him. When he explained to me about the radiation for my head, it's scary because all the uh, side effects. So you start losing memories. I don't want to. I don't want to lose what I have. This machine doesn't miss, <laughs> and that and that uh, he got a killing dose of radiation to the tumor itself. We nailed it. He is disease-free in his brain. Typically for lung cancer, stage four lung cancer, uh, the usual treatment is radiation for the brain if needed, and then essentially just chemotherapy. How are you doing? In Edgar's case, however, things are different. He's young, he's healthy, he's not a smoker. We've offered him a more radical and somewhat out of the box treatment option for lung cancer. Right now I'm planning in the neighborhood of 28 to 30 treatments, and they decided to go for it. I'm fighting to be a cancer-free man. That's my goal. Before we start his actual radiation treatments, we do a special CT scan to customize the radiation beams for his body, for his anatomy, and for his tumor. Radiation beams can be extremely precise. That's a great thing to have for stationary targets. But a lung tumor moves with breathing. The CT scanner in conjunction with that camera will allow us to track the tumor during the radiation so we don't miss it when it moves with breathing. Over the next few days, my medical physics team and I, using a complex uh, computer program, will design the radiation beams from hundreds of different directions to come up with a radiation dose plan that will deliver the prescribed amount of radiation to his tumor while minimizing excessive radiation to the critical organs, including the esophagus, the heart, both lungs. And the end process is this true beam radiation plan that we would not have been able to create just a few years ago. He's turning 50, the big 50. <laughs> Labor of love. With all my love, I always bake my cakes with all my love, especially for my close loved ones. We both thought about growing old now. Who knows? You're not going to feel anything. You're just going to hear the sounds that the machine makes. It's going to rotate around you, but won't touch you at any time. When we first got married, we said to each other that we will always be there for each other and that we were going to grow older. And that's what I've been telling him. Remember your promise? You're going to be here with me for many, many, many years. I go home in peace, you know. Something is working. Edgar is nice in the fact that he knows he's not out of the woods, but He's coming up with winning scores, essentially, every day. Yeah, maybe I'm going to beat this, beat this cancer 
and I say, you know, maybe I get, I get to be the lucky one, I say, you know. Sometimes I joke with my kids, hey, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be here asking for homeworks. <laughs> and they just laugh. Here I am, 50 years old. Family is, it's everything for us. In good and in bad, we're always there. Like he says, we'll be counting. 51. And then 52, 53. They keep counting. I want to be an old man. <laughs> I want to be able to see my grandkids. I want to have a life with them. You know, I want to hang out with my wife, uh, holding hands. I love her. There's milestones in everybody's life, whether it's uh, the next birthday or uh, a family wedding or a graduation. That's why we're kind of throwing the kitchen sink at Edgar. We're treating every piece of cancer that we saw on his initial scans, and we're hoping to get one step ahead of this cancer and control it long term, and who knows, maybe forever. My son Brian is graduating from high school today. We're here, son. <laughs> I kind of choked up. Hola, tía. Oh, son, you did uh, it, man. I know. Feels great. Accomplishment. Now all I need to do is accomplish college and then university, and I'm good. Yeah. I hope to be there, son. Of course. I'll be there, Dad. So far, Edgar's doing a lot better than statistics say. So, I got my money on Edgar. So far, he's winning. Are you good? Yeah. Warm enough? Yeah. Today, Edgar is here to have a follow-up PET scan so that uh, his doctor can see how he's responding to his treatment. It's hard. Hard not to think the worst. Oh, gosh, what if? What if? Oh, I better not think like this. I better not think like this. I better think. So today, I gotta find out. Tell me yes or no. Let's go. What we were trying to achieve was a complete remission, and it's good news. Oh my goodness, good. Very, Very good news. So at this point, Edgar is cancer free? Today, I can actually say it. I'm cancer free guy, you know, I can, I can put my name on that list. This is the happiness that you wanna share with everybody. Mm. My lungs are clear. <laughs> even explain how I feel. I know. With those eyes, you tell me a lot. I love you. I love you too. Thank you, honey. <sighs>